Lindemans, Faro, Lambic. Short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Vans Bikes and Birds Views. The sun is well and truly over the yard arm, which means it's time for a beer. Uh, I had somebody ask me what that means the other day, and uh, I'll just quickly let you know the yard arm is uh, part of a ship, it's on the front of a, a ship, an old, one of the old sailing ships, you know, with the mast and sails and stuff. And um, the Royal Navy, when they would be out in the Atlantic and the Mid Atlantic. Uh, the officers would gauge whether it was time for rum or not, whether the sun was over the yard arm. And if it was, then they would have their first tot of rum for the day. So that's where it comes from. And hence the English expression asking if it's time for a beer, saying, is the sun over the yard arm yet? So there you go, and now you know. Right, I've got a bowl of Lindemann's Faro Lambic, which um, is brewed by, obviously, Lindemann's, based in Belgium. They brew some... Absolutely amazing beer, Lindemans. Really good, and um, they do a creek beer, the Boone Creek beer, which is really nice. They also do a Husa, which is an alambic, the Creek, which is obviously alambic, and this Faro, which is alambic as well. And uh, this is quite a beer. It's gone through three stages of fermentation. So what you've got is um, you've got your normal brewing process, then they store it in oak barrels for a couple of years. And it ferments there and then they mix it with new beer and then they put it in the bottle and they add sugar to the bottle candy sugar and it ferments in the bottle so this is um bottle fermented and that's and that's your lambic beer they really are um strange beers they use obviously normal fermentation in the tank they also use uh spontaneous or wild fermentation which means that they just use the bacteria from the air uh, you know that occurs naturally in the air to eat on the uh, the malt and produce the alcohol, and obviously you've got the bottle conditioning, which is the yeast and the other bacteria eating on the sugar that's put in the bottle. So it's like the mad professor's got hold of um, the book and thrown it out and said, oh, "I'm going to do it my own way." So let's see what is in this bottle. Right, this is a 4.5% ABV beer. It is 25 centilitres or 250 ml, which might seem like a small amount, but it's quite common for um, hoses to be in that size or bigger sizes as well. There's normally a cork in the bottle as well on some of the, the, the good hoses. This has just got a normal cap. Um, I can't see any of the ingredients, but I can tell you that this has got, yeah, it's, it's in French and it's in Flemish. They don't do it in English. Um, but as I say, it's gone through three stages of fermentation, you, you know, and it, this is still fermenting in the bottle. So it says 4.5%. It could be stronger. Who knows? Let's get it open and let's see what is in the bottle. Before I get this open, I was debating what glass to use on this because they do a, a normal faro glass, which is like a pint glass with the the edges um, pushed in. So I'm just debating, you know, what, what glass I'm gonna use. Um, I'm probably gonna use this because you'll be able to see the old trusty Cloudwater craft beer glass. You'll be able to see everything that's going on in that. Plus it's the nearest I've got to what um, Hoser would normally be drinking. Well, it's not the nearest I've got, but it's a glass I could use that would be pretty in keeping with it. Right, bottle is open. Cap is just a, a normal gold cap that is covered in silver foil. Oh, actually, no, it's not. I do tell a lie. Um, it has got Lindemann's written on there. It's, I keep thinking, when I hear the word Lindemann's, I just keep thinking of chocolate. Of course, I'm getting it mixed up with lint. There you go. There's the cap. On the nose, out of the bottle. This is... Uh, 
the aroma I'm getting out of this, this is a unique to Lambic beer. It's a cross between very, very sour apples and champagne. And that is pretty much what the, um, the, the taste is like as well. But it smells great. Yeah, it's like very, very sour apples that you'd get in a West Country cider. There's that tartness as well, you're getting that on the, um, on the aroma too. Let's get it into the glass. Now, Faro is normally darker than a normal Hooser, but it's still, it's still a Lambic. There it is in the glass. No head whatsoever, but there is lots and lots of carbonation, which you'd sort of expect from um, beer that's had sugar added to it, you know, and the natural carbonation has taken place with all the yeast and the other bacteria that's in there. I just want to emphasise how much carbonation is going on there. Can you see that? I mean, they're all very, very small bubbles, but the bubbles are going for it at a rate of knots. Now, remember when I poured it, there was no... No head. That head has formed in the glass, which has to be a first for me. So it pours with no head, and then the head comes from the bottom of the glass. Amazing. Amazing! On the nose. Oh, even stronger fruit. Sour fruit. Yeah, that's all I'm getting is sourness. Apple. And again, as I say, and I want to emphasise this point, that this does remind me a bit of champagne. It's got that sort of aroma that, when you know, when lager brewers talk about, or when, when lager, um, yeah, lager brewers, and even critics as well, when they say, oh yeah, the beer's very crisp. You know, lager's very crisp. I don't think it's, crisp is a good way to describe lager. This is crisp. It leaves a very, very dry finish on the mouth, and that is uh, that's a better description of crisp. I think. Just, I just want to. Again, I know I'm labouring this point, but look at the head on that. That was nothing, and now it is thick, with tight, small bubbles on there. One finger head, really good. Let's get it down the hatch. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Now, this is the first time I've tasted Faro, uh, which is a style of Lambic. And I have to say, this really does remind me of a cider. Not a, not the crispness or sourness I was, gonna, I was expecting. It's very, very sweet. Now that sweetness is coming from the candy sugar that was added to, uh, after the fermentation, before it was put in the bottle to ferment again. And this results in a really, this results in a really sweet flavour. Um, it hasn't got, you know, I was talking earlier about the crisp and dryness of it. Hasn't got it. Mmm. It's really nice. If I was blindfolded in a test, I would say it's a. A very sweet cider. Mouthfeel is really nice. Yet yeah, it had loads of carbonation. You can just about feel that carbonation in the mouth, but it's very, very slight. But you can still, you know, it will still move the uh, flavours around there. I imagine people who don't like the um, Gers or Hooser, however you want to pronounce it, it depends what part of Belgium you come from, who don't like that because of its drying, dryness and its crispness, will like this because it is very sweet. Still alambic but sweet with the addition of that candy sugar they put in at the end. Mmm. Really nice. There is some of that sourness in there. You do get that, but it's not as extreme as the Hooser. And um, yeah, it's quite nice. Only downside on it, I would say it's a little bit too sweet for me. And of course it's been artificially sweetened with sugar, which 
I'd imagine a few more of these, you're going to feel a little bit sick. And it's only 25 cent of these as well, which for me, I think that's perfect. I wouldn't want to drink much more of that. I'm not a fan of sweet cider, I have to say. And this is, for all intents and purposes, this is what it's reminded me of. A really good quality sweet cider. Big, <clears throat> big um, apple flavour on it. But you're expecting that bitterness and sourness as it goes down, but it's not. All you get is a rush of sweetness. So, yeah, your big flavours in here are apple, sour apple, um, sugar sweetness, and a t there's a little touch of earthiness in it as well, which I, I presume it's either coming from the yeast or the uh, the hops that have been in it. It's not, it's not very hop heavy, though, to be honest. But yeah, all in all, it's not a bad drink. <laughs> So what's the verdict? Well, um, I have to say I love Lambics. Um, this one is a little bit too sweet for me. However, the addition of that candy sugar has just made it a bit, a little touch sickly for me. It's a bit too sweet. But having said that, I could quite happily finish that, that bowl, that 25 centiliter bowl, and it would, you know, it would go down great. This would be really nice with some cake or some, uh, some dessert, you know, with all the sweetness going on. But yeah, it's, it's nice, and I wouldn't expect anything less from Lindemans. I, I quite like these. They're, they're good, good, uh, good Belgian brewer. And I would give this, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. I wouldn't give it more because it's just a tad too sweet for me. But it's still not bad. I could quite happily drink you know, a bowl. Maybe two at a push. No more, though. Just, just too sweet for me. And remember, beer is working class champagne. <laughs>